So everyone can hear me? Fine, great. Uh, so my name is David, David Goulet. I work uh, at the LTTNG project. Uh, also, uh, I work at Officials, which is a company that basically we make features and uh, development in LTTNG. So today, uh, you, so usually uh, tracing talks are kind of a, kind of a, a bit boring, uh, but I've tried to do my best to make it fun. Uh, so just show of hand here, who uh, ever heard about LTTNG? Oh, that's great. At least two people, great. And uh, so, tracing uh, in general. Uh, can just show events who uses tracing uh, with S-Trace, Perf, F and uh, S-Trace also. All right, cool. So I'm in a good track. Uh, so I maintain the LTTNG tools uh, part, uh, component of the LTTNG tool chain. Uh, and uh, this presentation is about like tracing with LTTNG, but uh, showing you what we did uh, in the last three years in terms of excellent feature and great work and how you can use it in user space also. Um, so this will be a quick overview of LTTNG and tracing in general. Uh, I, I, I said probably people here uh, maybe don't know what tracing is, so I'm just going to do an overview about tracing. Uh, then we're going to talk about everything else and some future work. Uh, so the difference between tracing and, uh, and debugging or uh, having lo logging with syslog and so on uh, the, is that you can enable or disable events during runtime. And uh, tracing is low intrusiveness, very high performance. So with LTTNG, uh, we created this user space tracer and some a kernel tracer, and then we created the LTTNG tools component that mix them together, so you can merge kernel and user space trace within one within one trace and analyze that. After all, so tracing is basically high throughput, high performance debugging, uh, with like let's say you have printf, and then so tracing uses that printf but a high performance rate and it's scaled over CPUs also. So this is basically what tracing is. So for instance, S-Trace, so and everyone knows S-Trace here, the great tool, right? Uh, uses P-Trace uh, and just to hijack and understand how to print out the uh, syscalls. But uh, this is, uh, so tracing is more, it's a bit different from, uh, from debugging. It's very important to understand because this is basically what this, this talk is about, is to make you use uh, tracing in the end. Uh, so LTTNG 2.x, so we are 2.4 I think right now, um, uh, is a unified tracing. So unified tracing between user space and kernel space. Uh, as I said, low, over, low overhead, we use a common trace format called CTF, which is a tracing format, it's a binary format on disk, and then we analyze that with viewers, well, whatever viewers you can use. Uh, and we are now shipped in Ubuntu, Debian, Red Hat, and other distribution. So, as I said, so there's two tracers where you have the entity engine modules, which are the uh, the kernel trace. So, you, as a, I'm going to repeat that like a lot, you don't need to recompile your kernel with LTTNG. You use modules as of now. So, the difference between LTT engine uh, between perf and LTTNG. Uh, is that perf is in kernel. They do a lot of clever stuff. They do also um, uh, profiling, where LTTNG doesn't do that. Uh, but with the kernel module, with a kernel tracer, you can trace uh, a lot of events in the kernel. Syscalls and a bunch load of, of, uh, of whatever happens in the kernel in uh, different subsystems. And then we created this UST. The, uh, this is what I'm mostly I'm going to talk about today, is this user space tracer. So the love of development without printf. So we're going to use tracing in user space. Um, so this trace is an in-process library. So you're going to you instrument your application, you recompile, and you have your tracer. But the good thing is that you can enable, disable, uh, during runtime, any events. You can live trace it. You can snapshot. There's a lot of features. This is pretty fun. Uh, yes, so um, you can use the kernel uh, as in 2.638. Before that, there's three patches to the kernel, but uh, after that, there's no patches, only modules. Uh, the utilities of, uh, of, uh, of LTTNG. So LTTNG is, uh, uh, we created a, uh, a daemon, which is called a session daemon. The LTTNG session D, the third one, is the tracing registry daemon. This thing will combine everything you do. So when you 
create a trace, for instance, so you do a LTTNG create with a command line, uh, you can use it for kernel and user space tracing. So this is pretty, uh, pretty great where you can integrate uh, both sides into a trace. Uh, so yes, so there we could create a control library, you can use it, it's LC, so it's a C library, control library, we have a real AD, which this real AD makes that you can stream the trace over the network, so you can extract traces from machines and put it on the network and then analyze it later on. So this is the real AD, the, the streaming daemon. Uh, and the consumer D is the one who extract. So there's a bunch of daemon. You, you don't really need to care about that when you trace with LTTNG, so, uh, but if you want to do, uh, contribute or make development in LTTNG, those are kind of uh, the component. The viewer is we have a Babel trace, which, is, which basically uh, takes an input, a trace input, the directory, so the traces and the file traces, and just print out on the, on the, uh, the console, uh, human readable. Uh, there's LTTNG top, and uh, this is pretty, pretty awesome. So any, everyone here knows top or HTOP, and this LTTNG top is exactly the same, but it uses kernel traces to print out the, uh, the information on, on the top. So the difference between top and LTTNG top is that we don't probe proc uh, every second, for instance. We just use live traces, and we, uh, y you can have your output of what's going on in your system. So this is pretty, uh, pretty awesome, because usually the performance are 1% to 3% to 5% it on your system, where top takes a lot of CPUs. Um, all right, so this is LTTNG user space. Uh, your instrument, your application, I'm gonna have some, I, I think I have some couple of slides where it shows what's, the, what's an instrumentation, what means that. Uh, we call it trace points, so it just, you put trace points in your application and then uh, you can extract uh, at high speed your, your data. Uh, so in process library, uh, there's session setup, you run your app, you collect your traces and then you analyze, that's it, that's all. Uh, so, all right, so this is a, a quick ske uh, schema of, uh, of what's going on. So you're in a machine, and then you have your session daemon. So the session daemon, as I said, is a tracing registry. It, it's, uh, it just helps you create sessions and enable events. Uh, so on a command line, you do let to TNG create. Enable event, dash u means dash user space, or dash k, dash kernel. And we have other, uh, we call that domains. We have other domains that I'm gonna show you later on. And dash a means all. So you enable all event of all your application. So with LTTNG, the great thing about that is if you have instrumented application, uh, you can list what's, which application you can trace. So if you start your application on your machine, and they're gonna register to that session daemon. And so the session daemon will spawn a consumer and say, all right, okay, I'm gonna consume your trace, I'm gonna extract your trace, and that's it. It's pretty easy. And the, instrument, the, applica the instrumented application will, uh, so our consumer will create uh, buffers and will share it with the application. So the application will just populate those buffers with the tracing uh, data. And this is the great thing about tracing in user space with LTTNG is that when the, for instance, when your application crash, uh, well, the, the buffers are still alive. So we have the buffers, we have everything to consume them, we know the application is dead, so we just extract the data, and then you get all your trace, uh, even though the application is dead. And this, this way is done with uh, a shared memory. So we, use, we are using heavily user space RCU. So uh, anyone heard about RCU here? Show of hands, RCU, yeah, right. So RCU is a very complicated thing, but uh, it's a um, user space RCU, is, uh, RCU mean, uh, means read, copy, update. It's a, a synchronization mechanism to have very, very high efficient and performant, uh, very high performance uh, data structure, lockless data structure in, in, in uh, So in user space, there's a library, a RCU library called user space RCU, you can check it out, uh, and we use that a lot just to synchronize or trace and have our performance because, as I said, if you have eight CPUs or 128 CPUs, it's going to scale uh, over that. And so let's, oh, sorry. Uh, so yes, this, this is basically how, how we do stuff in user space. Share memory, we uh, exchange buffers, and that's it. 
All right, cool stuff. All right, cool. So this is how you instrument an application. Um, yes, it is, uh, it is C, it's macros. It's kind of complicated, to be honest. Uh, we have a, uh, <laughs> we have a uh, helper script that helps to create that, but uh, in the end, it's kind of a tedious process. But uh, again, you do, uh, the, the, the usefulness of tracing is that you, you instrument your application and you do it once. You don't put printf everywhere. You, do, you just instrument put on trace points and then you can trace it over time. So your, your application is running and at some point there's a, a problem. Well, you can just enable a couple of events uh, that you think is the subsystem is, 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 wor is uh, badly working and you, you can extract your data. So this uh, is, uh, so this is a test. If you go into the LTTNG repository, we have uh, um, uh, 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 examples. And this one is a Hello World example. So your provider name, trace point name, those are two different names just to separate the trace points. So you can have a, a bunch of trace points in your application and just uh, separate them into providers or domain or whatever. So instance, uh, your company name and then the department and then the, the application and the subsystem and that's it, you have your, your provider name. And then you can just trace the uh, fields, the, the payload you want. So uh, you record uh, in strings, structure, whatever. Uh, so we have a very basic function here. Um, and then that's this trace point that we, uh, we created here. So UST test hello, and then we're using it, right? So when you're, using a, your, when you're coding your application or maintaining it or whatever, you can add those trace points to the code and this, you only put trace point and then the fields and it's gonna record. So if the tracing is not enabled, um, there is, absolutely no uh, uh, performance it. So the trace point is going to be it, uh, it, it's just uh, zeroed out and that's it. If you enable it during runtime and then you hit it, uh, I think I have a, uh, a benchmark uh, a performance uh, charts, but as of now we are around 250 nanoseconds it takes to your application to hit the trace point. And it's kind of the lowest we can go right now. There is no syscall in the, in the path. It's all uh, zero copy stuff. So this is very, very high performance. So it's pretty, pretty, rough. pretty, pretty cool stuff. Um, and yeah, trace point. Tracing session. So you come in line, you create a session. So let's say you want to enable the subsystem number one and the subsystem uh, number 42. Uh, you can use wildcards like that saying just subsystem 42 underscore and then every event in that subsystem will be enabled. So dash u, user space, and then the subsystem name. And you can start, and the LTTNG start means it's gonna start tracing. The, the, the trace is gonna be, get recorded. And then you can, you can wait, you can do whatever you want, get coffee, and then you stop at some point, and then you can view it. So the, the view is, so this is an example of, of uh, the, the trace you can extract. So you have the timestamp uh, on the top, uh, top, uh, top, top left, and then you have the delta between uh, the two events. The orange, uh, orange thing is the deltas between the two events, so one second between this, those two. Then the host name, the tra uh, trace point name, provider and trace point name, and then the payload. And you have a CPU ID saying this event was done on that CPU, CPU 1, CPU 2, CPU 2, whatever. And then the payload. As I, as I said before, the payload, you can put whatever you want. Uh, anything, strings, int, uh, uh, structure, pointers, you can extract everything. Uh, so this is a human readable output uh, made from Babel trace uh, for a trace. Uh, so this is, this is another example of the kernel. So for instance, uh, this is called read, this is called open, and a, a sked switch. So sked switch is when to applica uh, applica uh, sorry. <clears throat> to pro uh, processes get, get switched on the scheduler and the kernel. Um, so yes, for instance, read, you have the, uh, the payload of read, the FD, the, the, the buffer pointer and the count. Open, you have the, 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 the file name, the flags, and so on and so forth. Uh, perf gives out, uh, 
around the same output uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, kernel tracing. Uh, it's pretty similar to S-Trace also. The difference is that S-Trace can uh, understand the, uh, the, the layout of the, the syscall, for instance, if you do a receive message or send message. Uh, the payload is going to be, uh, you're going to know the type of, of the payloads, which means the structure, the uh, arguments, and so on. So this is why buffer is a pointer. We don't know if where it points or what's the structure in there. It's just a pointer. But again, human readable. So again, start, stop, and you can view. But this is not very useful in the end because you just start a trace, you trace, and then you stop. So we created snapshots. Well, snapshot means you're running your application flight recorder. Uh, it's uh, ring buffers, you get, so you trace data, you get your data, you put it in the buffers, and at some point in time, uh, depending on the size of the buffer, it's going to get rewrit, uh, gonna get, uh, sorry, it's going to get uh, uh, erased by new, new data, so right, ring buffer, flight recorder. The point of that is that, let's say you monitor, you have a, you instrument your application with uh, UST, with trace data, with, uh, with trace points, and then you start, you just enable everything and then you start it. You just forget about it, because it goes into flight recorder mode, in ring buffer mode. And uh, you have some cacti or Nagios uh, alert, and you trigger a snapshot. So what this does is that you're going to record a snapshot, you get everything at, from that point on when you take your snapshot. And it's going to extract your data, put it on disk, or put it on network, as you, as you choose. You can put it on the network, it's going to send it to a real AD, LTTNG real AD, it's going to store it on file on another machine, or on your local machine. And you can then analyze your trace. The good thing with LTTNG and why I use LTTNG is that you can do that with the kernel and user space. So you can snapshot both domain, both tracers, so, and you can merge them, because the timestamps are asynchronized. So you have your trace data from your application and from your kernel. So this is pretty great because you can use that for mon to monitor uh, application that runs in production, for instance. So yeah, uh, create, enable, start, and then you wait. You do something and you snapshot record. And that's it. So real world use cases where you, we, we use that and uh, it's, 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 been, it's still being used. For, um, where we, we know um, a large, large setup that are being used uh, with that is, for instance, we have a core handler, a core dump handler, where you have core dump on an application, sec folds, whatever, and anything, your application core dumps. Well, you can tell it to, when it core dumps, it's snapshot. And this is really, really useful, with, especially with the kernel, because you can know exactly what happened with your application and the kernel when this application core up. And as I said, the buffers are shared with the consumer. It means that when it core up, you, you have the assurance that you're going to get every event that has been triggered by the application. So we have that uh, in the tree right now. If you go to LTTNG, uh, um, uh, git.lttng.org, you have the repository there, and you have this, we have this fancy uh, bash uh, script that it allows you to just uh, snapshot when it core dumps. Uh, IDS also. So let's say you are tracing regularly, um, you're, you're just tracing your, your application in your kernels you're, uh, on different machines, different hosts. Uh, there's been, there's right now research doing, uh, being done at uh, the University in, uh, in Montreal where it, it uses the data, live data, that is outputted from LTTNG to create IDS, to uh, analyze that on the spot, real time, and just triggers, trigger action if some, some pattern emerge. Um, so LTTNG is being used to create data logs, uh, to merge with syslog also. We, have, uh, we, we try to work with plugins that ab uh, allows you to uh, use tracing data and put it with, uh, for instance, Splunk or, uh, or Syslog uh, in terms of time correlation. Uh, you can use that for uh, performance profiling, so on and so forth. So as of last year, I think it's September, something like that, uh, we, uh, we are still in the uh, release candidate uh, process for the 2.4 version. But we added the live component. So the live component means you can trace your data, 
You can trace application kernel and you can read the, the event as they're being recorded. Uh, that sounds, that seems like easy to do, but it's kind of very difficult. So uh, in terms of synchronization and performance to keep that performance on, but uh, after a lot of work, we, we, uh, we added this feature up upstream. So as of now, you, the LTT NGTAP, for instance, uses that. Uh, you create your, your trace, your session, you trace your kernel, you trace your application, and then you can live read your trace. So one of the things we're trying to do is to have a, 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 a like an, a drop-in replacement for S-Trace, for instance, where you can use LTTNG to do the same thing as S-Trace does. And the difference between S-Trace and LTTNG is that S-Trace changes your application. It uses P-Trace. It changes stuff. And the behavior application within S-Trace and without S-Trace is different. Uh, because P-Trace is very, very intrusive and changes registry in, in, in the doing some uh, jump trampoline buffers uh, to, 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 uh, to extract this data. So imagine you can use a kernel uh, with a 3% 3 3 uh, it performance on your system and have the exact the same thing with test trace. This is what you're trying to do. This is why we come here to fast them to just like explain this fantastic feature and not sell it to you, but also try to make you contribute and help us to de uh, develop and get contributors in LTTNG. So this is the kind of stuff we're working on. So the live tracing, the thing is that you can continuous analysis, cluster level analysis. You can do a lot of things with live you can imagine where you extract data live. Uh, and one of the things with LTTNG in the last year is that we try to, to bring tracing to not kernel developers. Right, so to user space developers, to system administrator, just to use tracing in not in a development fashion, but in a just monitoring in useful way. So this is a quick uh, image of, of uh, the infrastructure of LTTNG, where you have LTTNG session D on your host. So this means LTTNG session D is the daemon that uh, traces. So the traces are being collected on the LTTNG session D on the top server A, server B, server C. Those servers are being traced. And you can extract those traces on t uh, through TCP to RealAD. And then you can have your viewer connected to that RealAD on, over TCP. Uh, so for instance, we, have a, uh, we work with uh, companies, uh, large companies like uh, Ericsson in Sweden that uh, uses this kind of infrastructure where they have a huge amount of, of, of servers. They extract the data to a couple of uh, other machines through the network. And then they view it with other machine to analyze it through another uh, to, uh, to the network again. Um, it scales on a massive amount of of of, uh, of, uh, of machines, and it's being used. So this is not just like uh, you know just one uh, so someone some developers having a dream. It's it's being used. So yes, um, I want to. Uh, I wanted to uh, demo you LTTNG Tap, but um, I kind of have a problem with my laptop this morning, so I can't, uh, unfortunately. But what I can do, though, is, is just to, all right, just to show you some, some basic LTTNG stuff. So what we have is LTTNG, right? OK, so LTTNG, uh, let me see something that would be four. So one thing is that if you have a session daemon running as root, uh, it's it going to load automatically the kernel uh, module, the kernel tracer. If your application, if your uh, your user is in the tracing group, uh, so we we added this tracing group. Um, you can you can change the name. I mean it's it's configurable, but. Um, the uh, tracing group allows you to talk to the session daemon. And the session daemon is running as root and can trace the kernel. So a normal user can trace the kernel. So I'm in that tracing group. So I'm going to LTTNG create a session. There you go. So there's no session daemon. So it spawned. And then it's going to write the trace there. All right. So LTTNG list dash k dash means list the event of the kernel domain. Yes, I need the, I'm not in the tracing group. All right, okay. Let me put you on with the root. Sorry, my laptop is a mess right now. All right. 
Okay, put on back on the uh, root stuff. There you go. Okay, LTNG lives dash K. So this is all the kernel event you can trace. You see, XTFS, BTRFS, XT3, uh, RQs, KVM. So those are standard events that are, uh, are in the kernel right now. It's trace point, uh, they're called trace events in the kernel. So perf, I have the same events. Uh, Ftrace is uh, also, I, I think Ftrace is listing those events also. And then you can trace whatever you want. So let's, oh yeah, okay. Let's trace them all. And I'm gonna see how much events gonna create. So I'm gonna say just enable all events of my session for the kernel. Oh, I need to create a session though, sorry. All right, enable event, actually that's okay. And it is, so all the events are enabled and there's a lot right now. So when I do LTNG start, so the tracing is starting. So at this point, my, my uh, computer is uh, tracing the kernel. Just to show you how much data is going to create. Um, I think it's a DNSSH. So let me just try to center that. Oh, we can see, right? 11, 11 megabytes and then 12 megabytes. So right now it's tracing. So those are the... Um, those are the, uh, the, um, the files, the, the, the data files. So channel zero means it's channel zero is a default channel. So you create a channel and you put on events in, in those channels. So you can uh, have different events in different channels in different session. You can uh, move that around in the network or, in a, uh, or not. So as of now it's tracing and I think my CPU is about doing nothing right now. But I'm extracting every, every event of the kernel right now. It's a lot of data. And there's nothing, there's Tor and Awesome, that's it, right? So let's stop that and I'm gonna show you how it looks like. Yes. Oh yeah, LD config, right? There you go. So here's the data and it's non-stop. I have, I don't put less, I'm gonna show you how works. Nonsense. All right, so this data is being recorded. This is, tra this is kernel's event. Every KMM alloc allocation, every alloc memory allocation, every sked switch, everything, every RQ, everything is being traced. So let's try to step that. And uh, just to show you the, the, the amount of data you can extract without any performance hit. And this is kind of really great. And you can, as I said, you can couple that with any uh, user space application. Um, so if I add any application, you have the LTTNG list, dash U, and you can see the application and what you can trace when the application started. So the application registers the session daemon and then lists the event. So you can just list dash U, see what application you can trace, and start tracing. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so let's go back to... Uh, oop, all right, so it is some just performance results, just to show you the, uh, the awesomeness of the show. So we run that for 50 minutes, um, and we took a snapshot um, um, every I don't every 30 seconds. There you go, and it created a snapshot of seven megabytes of data. And the old S trace, uh, so we compared it to S trace. So S trace would create what, about five uh, five point four gigabytes of data in a matter of 50 minutes, with 61 million events. So. Remember, S trace is syscalls for a specific application. LTTNG will trace every syscall that happens in your, in your uh, machine for every application. And not only uh, syscalls, but all the other events you saw. It creates 6.8 gigabyte, 250, 250 million events uh, in the same time. So those are uh, the same. And we have a 1% event loss. Uh, so event loss is basically that uh, there's way too much data at way high speed, uh, so we have to uh, lose events, unfortunately, be, to be able to have this kind of performance and record. So this is the, uh, the uh, uh, dedicated disk for Trace. So mean, it means that we have a disk and the Trace is being put on that disk. A dedicated disk, not a shared disk with your operating system. And you can see all, there's five lines, but you see two right now. So the red one is S-Trace, uh, S-Trace MySQL. 
MySQL, and the rest is the same with LTTNG. So there's no performance if. So it's the same as no tracing. And we are comparing that with Flight Recorder, as I said, where the, the, uh, we're just recording, recording, recording the buffers. And the, red, the yellow one is the streaming. So you extract your data, you stream it on, on the network, so you extract them to another machine, and there's absolutely no performance hit, but you trace 250 million events. So in a shared disk, uh, it goes a, a bit more badly because then you have very high contention on the disk and the IOs are off the roof. Um, so no tracing, of course, high performance. And then you get your S-trace, which is the yellow one, and LTTNG, just scalable. So this is why you can see the, uh, the, the flat line of S-trace, is that when you go through 32 threads on a, on a 32 CP machine, then it, it, doesn't, it doesn't scale at some point. It stops scaling, and uh, it just doesn't go linearly where LTTNG does. Uh, the difference is that we have sh uh, per CPU buffers, and we try very hard to just avoid cache line bouncing and a lot of performance problem you have when you have multi-trading application. So, oh yeah, 30 minutes in my talk, yeah. Recent work and new features. So, <clears throat> all right, so LTTNG is, uh, uh, 2.x uh, has been created in 2010, I think. And each version is the name of a beer uh, in Quebec, uh, Montreal, Quebec, uh, in Canada. So we have microbreweries in Quebec that we are very good breweries. So every uh, we're following the uh, the alphabet. So we start A to whatever we are. And so 2.0 is Annandale, 2.1 is Boss Mess, 2.2 is uh, um, uh, Cuda, which is a very nice IP from a bar microbrewery in Montreal. And every demo. So 2.4 is Epoca Pack, which the E1, which is a microbrewery in, uh, called Trou du Ziard in Quebec. And uh, 2.5, I don't remember what the name is going to be, but it's going to start with F. Uh, so in, uh, so in 2.4, in we added uh, live tracing, as I said. We have also a snapshot that's been done in 2.3, but uh, um, uh, you, can, uh, you can use them uh, in 2.4 or in 2.3, whatever. And we added also the Java util support. So I don't know if there's a lot of Java developer here. Uh, I'm not a very, really a Java developer. I don't really like Java, but uh, there's a lot of people using Java. So we have this uh, contract to, to uh, support entity, uh, not, not support, but add a feature of, of using Java uh, util logging. So GUL, Java util logging is a library where you can uh, you log your application Java. So we hooked, we, we have a LTTNG agent in Java that is, is hooks itself on, uh, on the Java util library and extract every data from that and put it on an LTTNG trace. So this is pretty nice because if you're doing Java, you can do nothing to your application. Uh, one line, like just Java LTTNG dot uh, create your class or uh, I don't remember exactly what it is, but just you create the class and then you start the Java, the LTTNG thing. And you can use LTTNG as I did with the console and trace your Java application. So uh, yeah, so there's a, there's a performance hit, but uh, again, it's pretty useful. Uh, future work, I'm almost done, so there's a lot of time for questioning after that, but uh, future work is that we're going to add this year ad hardware tracing. We've been uh, talking a lot with uh, ARM people, embedded people, and we're going to try to put on the hardware traces into LTTNG. So once we can do that, it means that you can combine hardware traces, kernel traces, and user space traces. In the same, in the same uh, trace, you can correlate the timestamp and then analyze that, which is to be honest, pretty awesome, and it's you can do that right now uh, unless you use uh, some proprietary, soft, proprietary software from Microsoft or Oracle is was trying to uh, close source D trace, uh, but uh, it, it's coming up. And then trace triggers, Android ports, uh, uh, a port for Android, and then automatic analysis, uh, dynamic also instrumentation where D trace does, and we don't unfortunately, but we're trying on that. So. If you're looking for for, uh, for an open source project to contribute, or even though even a job, uh, dynamic uh, dynamic instrumentation is very important for us, and we're trying to do that. Uh, yes, so LTTNG project. Uh, that's no review of it. So if there's questions, that's the right time. 
Yes, I think there's a microphone around. Uh, just, there's one person over there. Right there, over. So for the, um, just one thing for the question and answer, please sign clearly if you have got a question so we can come around to your place to give you the microphone. And if you want to leave, please leave quiet so the others have the chance to, yeah, ask their questions. <laughs> So you have mentioned that uh, there are standard uh, tracing points in the Linux kernel so that I don't have to recompile. And uh, as far as I could understand, uh, you log, to, you can log to the same uh, machine, for example, on the disk, right? Uh, you can what? Just the, uh, I can trace what? On the disk? Uh, so I, I enable everything in the kernel and then I want to log this data um, on the local disk. Yeah. It, it happens uh, like in parallel. So uh, do I get spurious uh, log uh, entries in my trace data? Oh, yeah. So, so you're, you're saying that you, while we're extracting, do we get uh, those events in the data? Yeah. Of, the, of LTTNG working. So yes, there's a kind of a feedback loop in, in there where you, you see the LTTNG events. Uh, so you're, we're extracting data, we're using, of course, syscalls, and you see them in the trace, yes. So the more you trace, the more you create data. But uh, you can filter that out. Uh, we have filters in the UST, and then it's gonna come with the kernel. So you can just remove LTTNG even. That was the question? Uh, yeah, uh, another question. Uh, can I uh, inject these uh, uh, trace points dynamically into the running kernel, and do I want to do this if yes? Right, so, all right. so the question is, that is uh, can I dynamically add trace points to the kernel, right? So our, the trace events in the kernel are static, so it means they're coded, they're upstream right now, and you use them. What's existing is the kernel is called kprobe, or function tracer, the F trace tracer. So you can hook to any symbol in the kernel with that. And LTTNG supports that. So we, you can, for, ev for every event, you can just add, let's say I want to trace that, that function in the kernel. So you can do that uh, with LTTNG, with the L enable event dash dash function or dash dash kpro. So those are uh, uh, mechanisms that exist in the kernel. You can dynamically trace any, any symbol, you know, if, if you have the address or the name. Uh, yes, you can do that with LTTNG. Hi, yeah. um, I have some question for um, user space tracing. Yeah. So, um, uh, is there any documentation anywhere to like for people who are not familiar with kernel programming to do just user space probing somewhere? Because when I was looking for something on LTTNG, I didn't find much information. Yeah. Let's say I want to add some tracing points for Python interpreter. Um, is there anywhere right. I can look at? So. Uh uh, documentation is always a problem in open source uh, project, <laughs> and, uh, and LTTNG is uh, also lacking in some of documentation right now. So, for instance, if you want to uh, add the instrumentation in your application, uh, what I would say is uh, you can uh, the man page of LTTNG UST is the best place to look for now. So, man page of LTTNG UST UST is user space tracer, LTTNG dash UST I think, and uh, and also you look at the examples in the code repository. What, this year, we want to create a developer uh, documentation, doc, uh, developer guide. But again, it's just a matter of time and resources just to do that. And can you easily extract like uh, the stack of, at the C level? Like what? when you use a space and you yeah. want to extract the whole stack at some point, is it easy to do in the LT, LTTNG or? The, uh, I just don't get. Uh, the, if you want to extract the stack, the, the stack at some given point. Oh no, no. Okay. No, not at all. Uh, is it open? Okay. Can I go? Okay. Uh, hi. Yeah. Can you describe, please, how does LTTNG? Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. Uh, can you describe how LTTNG analyzes data while they're being created and? What interfaces are available for doing that? Uh, so the question is that is there is there any interface to do the analysis of LTTNG data? I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Is, is the, the question is in the live mode of LTTNG, so extracting data while it's it's getting gathered, 
uh, is there interfaces to do analysis is the question? Sure, yeah, that's it. All right, so uh, we have LTT and GTAP that does some analysis. There's this TMF, the Trace Monitoring Framework, I think is in Eclipse. So this uh, tool that I'm going to present is a huge graphical tool to, to um, uh, analyze the LTT and GTrace and all other traces. Uh, it's it's uh, it, it's an Eclipse. There's a there's a rich client. Uh, what, what's it called a RCP thing, which you can use out, outside of Eclipse, that allows you to analyze data and, and compare data. But if you go through a, a automatic analysis, for instance, no, there's nothing right now. And this is something we're looking for contributors to help us do automatic analysis in terms of whatever you can think of security, performance, and so on. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering if there's a way to use LTTNG in non-C code, but yes. without dropping through the FFI interface. Right, so uh, we have uh, Java bindings, and we're working on Python bindings also. Uh, but as of now, without uh, the Java works fine without any, using any C, but as of now, you use C code or you use Java. We don't have anything else. But there's, this year, we're working for Python bindings. So it would be possible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hi, I'm involved in a real-time Linux project which uh, works with RT preempt, Xenomai, as well as RTI. So the last one is out of question because that's f -trace lane. Uh, I don't expect any problems using that with RT preempt. The open question for me is Xenomai. Are there any data points using that uh, for trace using LTD and J user? For real time? With, with Xenomai user land threads, yeah? Uh, no, so the old LTD and G code had patches for RT preempt, but okay. uh, the 2.x doesn't support RT preempt at all. No, it, it won't work. Um, I can turn the question differently. Are there, in the, hand, in the generation of a trace event, is there any system calls? Or is that just memory to memory operations? Uh, yeah, um, there's no system calls uh, when the trace point is being recorded. There's none. So we just, uh, there's the write on disk, but there's kind of zero copy thing where we just map map some region of the data and then we extract it afterwards. So during the trace point, there's no syscall at all. Okay, thanks, that covers it. Uh, hey, Barry. <laughs> yeah. So how does LTT and G compare to a system tab or D tracer? So is it that it always traces everything and you analyze it later, or what's the main differences? All right, so the major difference is that D-Trace and System Tap, when you trace user space, you go through a kernel every time. Uh, we don't do that in user space. We don't go through the kernel, so it means we don't have syscalls. Where D-Trace and System Tap, you have to use the uh, a kernel module or go through the kernel to trace, uh, to extract your data. D-Trace, uh, it's, it's great, but the big issue is that, and I'm sorry if there's Oracle people in the room, but uh, it's, it's been bought by Oracle, right? It's, it was a son, it's been bought by Oracle. And then Oracle right now is just not saying it right now, but it's trying to put it on a closed source way of doing stuff where they just close source everything. And uh, so there's a Linux support for D-Trace, but it's not that good. Uh, usually the trace is for Solaris and, uh, and uh, OSX is using it also. And system tap is a great thing. It's just a bit complicated. They do stuff differently in terms of uh, buffering and extracting data. But again, they go through the kernel. We don't. And this is a very, very uh, different approach of in terms of performance. So LCNG is performance uh, centric in terms of the features, where system tap and D-Trace, they, they don't do that. Uh, just want to mention that system, uh, system tap and D-Trace have dynamic uh, uh, tracing. We don't. That dynamic tracing means you can just, your application running and you can just decide to trace, uh, to, uh, to trace that uh, specific function, for instance. Uh, and they go through a kernel to do that. That's the difference. Um, if, I'm, uh, if I want to trace a user space application with UST um, and I want to get a full trace 
from the moment my program starts running, so all the events from the beginning, um, can I somehow pre-enable the trace points before the application is registered with yep. the session daemon? Yep. Okay. So you can enable uh, you can enable any events you want, and when the application starts, we're going to enable them before the main of the application starts. So this means that when the the main starts of your application, uh, the trace points are already enabled. Excellent. So yeah, you can you can enable like before. Okay, yeah. cool. And one other question: um, If I have a long-running application that I'm tracing, and halfway through the trace, I decide I want to enable more events, can I do that without stopping and restarting yeah. the trace? Yeah. yeah. You just go enable event, and it, it adds it. Yes. Well, that's the beauty with tracing: is that you can enable disable events whenever you want. Excellent. So, at any point in time, you can disable events, like meaning stop it, stop tracing that event, or you can enable them. Uh, so you don't have to enable them prior, right? So uh, let's say you want to enable uh, one event and then you start the application, it traces, and then you want to disable it, enable it. Uh, it doesn't, it, it's, it's not important, you just enable event whenever you want. During okay. one time. Question, yeah. Hi, um, are you guys looking at uh, tracing guests in virtualized environment through the hypervisor? So, uh, so are we looking at uh, tracing uh, 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 virtualization? Yes, uh, guess, uh, I mean you have a session daemon running on the host and then you have a co uh, yes. couple of guests and then the guests are right. basically tracing. So KVM has some events in the kernel, uh, so you can trace those events from the KVM events, but so getting the trace out of the oh, the, the, the VM uh, within the within the host, for instance, uh, no, we don't do that. But uh, we support to trace different. Uh, we add the host name in the trace. So, for instance, if you use Elixy or vServers, okay. uh, and also contextualization, in the trace, it's going to show which host name is being used. Okay. So this event, you can uh, say, oh, this is come from that machine. Virtualization is a much more uh, Split between the host right. and the guest, so this is much more difficult to just trace. So, are there any plans of supporting that? In the <coughs> not now, future? not right now. This is kind of difficult, but uh, one thing would be great is to uh, just synchronize the timestamp. And no, okay. there is no plan uh, plan for that, and that would be kind of awesome. <laughs> okay, thanks. <coughs> all right. So thank you all. I'm here um, for next weekend, and I have a talk tomorrow. So please come to uh, this uh, OTR talk tomorrow. Thank you for the talk, and uh, the next talk here in Johnson will start.